Hi readers, it's Kristen from Blue Egg Brown Nest. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about how to, what distress means and how to distress a piece. I know I talked about the four steps, the painting, the waxing, the sanding, the dark wax. Um, but some of you had asked me to do specifically a distressing. And what distressing basically means is sanding and then the dark wax process. Um, but it's a little bit confusing because I like to sand before I do the clear wax. I wouldn't consider the clear wax really the distressing part of it. So um, I'm going to show you what I mean by distressing. So I'm going to have to chop up this video a little bit, but um, I take my 3M, which means the brand. It doesn't mean the size, like I originally thought. Um, I take my sandpaper. This is 100 grade. Yes, 100 grade sandpaper, whatever. Um, these are my lounge clothes, and this is typically where I get into trouble, which is I get excited about doing a piece and I don't go and change into my paint clothes. So um, don't do not do this at home. <laughs> get your paint clothes on, do it right, because you'll get mad when you get uh, paint all over every pair of leggings that you own. And um, I have my nice uh, tea here. Anyway, so you take your sander and you're just going to sand the edges. Again, what I like to do, okay, sometimes that happens. The drawers get stuck because of the paint. You just move on to the next drawer and you have your, your sweet husband open for you. I like to do around the drawer. I like to do any kind of detail. Because I think that's where it would naturally be rubbed anyway. Again, all the detail. So you get the idea. You want to sand it. Then, what you're going to do is you're going to go over it with a clear wax. I wouldn't consider that distressing though. You're just going to go over the whole thing with the clear wax. You can watch the clear wax video tutorial to understand how to do that. Um, and when I come back, I'm going to have done the clear wax and I will do the second part of distressing, which is dark wax application and rubbing it off with your fine wool. That's what I mean by distressing. It means sanding and it means the dark wax. So if you hear me talk about distressing, that's what it means. Um, and that should, that's just basically where you have fun, where you make it look worn. You have a lot of freedom in your distressing. You can distress a little bit, you can distress a lot. Um, if you're going to chalk paint, if you're going to take an old piece of furniture, please distress a little bit. There is no point in painting a piece of furniture to have it look like you bought at a pottery barn. It's worth making it look a little old, a little rubbed, a little interesting, um, and, and you have a lot of control. I know it's a little bit scary. I know some of you have told me that you messed up during this stage of the process. Um, I would suggest evaluating as you go. And I'm going to come back after my clear wax is dried, about 24 hours, and I'm going to show you um, the dark wax application again. So this is all about distressing. See you soon. Hi guys, I'm back. Uh, it's Kristen from Blue Egg Brown Nest. That's my dog. You must hear me talking. Um, I wanted to, I hope you can see me. Um, I'm talking about distressing today. And the first step that I showed you was sanding. When I talk about distressing, it means sanding and it means dark waxing. That's what distressing means. If you're going to use any Sloan chalk paint, you want to distress. I mean, there's really no point in painting your piece, an older piece, to make it look storied 
and unique if you don't distress it. So don't be scared. Again, you can always paint over the whole darn thing if you feel like you botched it. Um, but I'm going to move on to the dark wax since I've already sanded, as you saw. Um, just real quickly, after you sand, I didn't show you this, take your big dry brush. You want a really big one. It can even be bigger than this. But make sure it's dry. Um, don't, don't use a brush that's already been, um, you've already painted with. Just go over it. Make sure there's no um, sand marks. That's really important because what will happen if it's like sandy is when you go over with your dark wax, you will see little bits of sand that is now dark. It's um, not a good look. So take your Annie Sloan dark wax. And I know you have shown you this before. Take your Annie Sloan round, small wax brush. Honestly, guys, you need it. I mean, it is expensive. It's 40 bucks, at least 40 bucks. Um, but if you do use a rag, you just not, it's just harder. You're not gonna get the same effect. It's worth using the proper tools. Dip it in, rub it just to take off the excess. It kind of reminds me of mascara, you know, just how it can get really clumpy. Um, and then you want to take your 100 grade steel wool, which is what I find is the best. Again, do not use a medium or hard steel wool. It will create lines in your piece and, um, and scra it'll look like scratches. So once again, you want to go over the edges with your dark wax. This is an old white piece, and I did a tutorial on old white. If you use dark wax on old white, it's gonna show up because it's a light color, because it's white. But use it on something in French linen, it's not gonna show up as much. So you gotta be really careful when you use your dark wax on an old white piece. Make sure you're going over it with your steel wool. I know you can't see it very well, but um, it's also gonna really smooth out that wax. For this piece, I'm just gonna go on along the edges because that's where the natural wear would look. You're making a piece that looks worn and old. That's what the goal is. So you want to weather the surfaces that would naturally get worn. Um, and that's the sides. That's some of the legs. That's maybe some of the detailing here. Um, evaluate as you go. Again, if you're painting an old white piece, do not go overboard because it will look muddy and you will not be happy. Go slowly, step back. This is actually a piece um, that I'm doing for somebody, so um, I would probably, if it were my piece, I would go really heavy on the dark wax because I like something that looks like it has a lot of history to it. Um, since this is for somebody, it could be a little more um, gentle with my application. Again, I'm just going over with a dark steel wool. And this is also the opportunity to really look at what you've done. Um, and see if there's any, see this is some clear wax that I didn't um, see when I was buffing. Let's get rid of that clear wax. Um, you'll see some particles from the steel wool coming up. That's fine, just brush them away. Um, if you see any drip marks that have dried, no problem. I see one right here. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, see, I'm going to peel it off. Or I'm going to take my, my um, sandpaper. And I'm going to get rid of it. So, again, if it's a weather piece, any kind of distressing is, is going to enhance it. This is clear wax. I'm just kind of, see, there's some clear wax that didn't get um, rubbed off. No big deal. 
Just rub it off. And that'll definitely happen in some of your crevices like this. Um, you got to work with the piece until you really like what's happening. Don't be afraid to play with it. That's the point. I don't believe that chalk paint is supposed to be seamless and clean. I think it's supposed to be artistic. I think it's supposed to be left up to your interpretation of what you think the piece should look like. If you're doing it for a client, as I do, um, about 50% of my work is for other people. You gotta consider them and what they like for sure, but you can't get lost in the integrity of the piece. You, you gotta make it what it needs to be. And I don't mean for that to sound cheesy, but um, this piece would not look like it had had the history that I think it now looks like it has if I just solidly painted the piece. So I hope that's helpful. Check out my site, blueeggbrownnest.com. Um, I will be happy to answer any questions. Just email me. My email's on there. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, I'm going to be doing the Washington, D.C. Um, home and remodeling show um, in January. I would love to see some smiling faces if you wanted to come see me. Um, and until then, have fun!